Hello, welcome back to the Impact Lounge with your weekly Impact Review. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Adam, and I'm joined by Ro. Good day to you, Ro. Good evening to you, Adam. I want to believe that I get that right. Good afternoon. I don't know why I went Australian on you by saying good day. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's mid-afternoon here. I'm guessing early morning for you. And uh, if it's your first time stopping by the channel, people, uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy today's show because we've got a lot to talk about. And uh, yeah, do make sure you hit that subscribe. We've also noticed over the last couple of weeks, we get a lot more comments on our threads. So that's always great to see. If you do like something that we're saying, or if you don't like something you say, make sure you do comment because that's what we thrive on. So uh, what else do we usually start off the show with? Uh, we usually use some questions from the viewers. We also throw you a trivia question. We're going to get into all of that in a second. But before we do, uh, we also usually go with a, a bit of a shout out to some of our podcasting brethren out there. And I'm going to actually plug another show I'm on this week. I did plug them last week, but I'm going to do it again this week because I'm going to be doing my No Surrender review on there as well but they do some really good stuff not only impact but also wwe and uh, new japan and all those things that's the broken but glorious podcast so please check me out on there this week as well right other than that uh on facebook we've got uh, the impact wrestling fan zone we've also got the impact lounge page check out all of these things because ro and i often comment on there and uh, it can be found but the main place to find us is on the YouTube channel that we're on and also on any device that you listen on, any, you know, like iTunes or SoundCloud or whatever it is that you can find us on. Make sure to leave us a thumbs up, a thumbs down. We really don't care. All opinions are welcome. So before I jump into that, I'm going to reveal the answer to last week's trivia question. Uh, we asked you who debuted, I think it was 2012 and stayed until 2015, was an active wrestler despite never having a singles match on the show. And he returned late last year uh, in an angle where he was featured, but once again, didn't wrestle. And the answer was, as many of you got right, was King Mo. Uh, and the first one to get it right last week was Cardination 420, who beat Willow Rush by... I think about 15 minutes. That was about it. So well done to you two guys. Although there was a lot of other people who did get the answer right as well. There's a few wrong answers in there, which could have, could have, could have possibly been right. Like uh, Rampage Jackson, although I don't think he came back last year. But my favourite one, my favourite wrong answer, and that doesn't mean I don't want you to guess next week because it did give me a chuckle. Was Jay Bradley? If anyone remembers him, do you remember him, Ro? Yeah, um, that's formerly uh, Aiden O'Shea, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's correct. It is Aiden O'Shea, but he started off as Jay Bradley and uh, he had sir, one of the gut check tryouts and he entered into a competition to win a place in the Bound for Glory series. Actually, I should be keeping this for a future question, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> but but he eventually beat out, believe it or not, Brian Cage in the gut check competition and he took Brian Cage's place in the Bound for Glory series where I don't, I don't know, maybe he got... A point for a draw, but I don't think he won much anyway. So anyway, yeah, that was the answer. It was King Mo. And uh, this week, Ro is going to be asking his trivia question. So over to you, Ro. Okay. This week, you know, after deliberating with Adam, he told me I should try to come up with something that's a little bit less difficult. So hopefully you guys are able to get this. But it's once again, who am I? What wrestler am I? And here's your three clues. I'm a former X Division and Tag Team Champion. I used to be a part of LAX. And I've been in multiple promotions where in one promotion I was the inaugural ch world champion. And the other I won a contest that was uh, that I participated and won in a contest that they had during that time. Which wrestler am I? Be sure to leave your answer in the comments. Excellent. So that's a trivia question for the week. We'll give you a reminder at the end of the show just so that you can uh, drop us, uh, see if you can beat Cardination this week to it. Uh, we also usually go for some questions. And if you have got a question you would like us to answer on next week's show, please uh, once again put it in the comments. But uh, both Ro and I are going to choose one from this week's comments. And my one comes from Renegade Otaku about what my opinion of Joe Henry is for the next block of impact tapings. Um, I'm guessing you've asked me because obviously I'm British, uh, but I'm going to be honest with you. I know of Joe Henry. I know he's a darling of the British wrestling scene. And I've seen some of his YouTube stuff. I've never seen him live. Um, but 
without knowing anything else about him other than that, I think it's great that they are trying to push a British talent because the only other British guys they've had was Magnus, or uh, who I actually really liked and I think has a lot of value and is obviously at the all-in event. Uh, I think they should have brought him back last year when, when he, he did come back for those few weeks just to drop the title. Um, so I think it's great that we get a big guy who can talk on the mic. And funnily enough, I actually thought that, you know, I think there was another question that, that we were asked uh, about people coming in last week who would like to see come in. And I always thought Wade Barrett would have been a good fit. But he, to me, is a bit like Wade Barrett in that he's really good on the mic. He's got bags of personality. I don't think he's the best wrestler in the world. I might be wrong. But for a big guy, you know, he's, he's very, very competent, if not very good. So I'm all for it. You know, I'm glad that he that we're attracting you know, some British talent over there and hopefully it'll help us grow in the UK as well. And when I say help us grow, uh, that makes it sound like I'm on the impact salary or payroll. I'm not. I wish I was. Anyway, Ro, do, do you know anything about Joe Hendry? No, I'm not too fam familiar with him, but my thing is, look, it's cool always getting new talent. It's just having some type of long-term plan. And for the people who aren't familiar with Joe Hendry, this gives some of us Impact fans an opportunity to see his work. And then it even gives a bigger opportunity to kind of make him be like a homegrown Impact star. And I think that's the one thing that the company needs with, you know, while we've had consistency, you know, we've seen people depart and arrive. You know, we need to get back to a point where we're having our homegrown guys. That way we don't have to rely on, you know, outside big names from for the former companies so i'm interested to see what he can bring in the impact ring yeah absolutely so uh yeah i hope i think he might have even debuted at the the, the tapings last night um funnily enough we always complain about you know we don't like people spoiling things and we're, we're spoiler three free on our channel uh i do sometimes you know go online and do look at the spoilers but i couldn't actually find any from last night's tapings so uh there you go even though people spoil it for us this time i couldn't find it and that isn't an invitation for you to post spoilers on the channel by the way that will be severely frowned upon i just want to point that out right now right uh ro um what was your question that you wanted to pick out of the comment section yeah, uh, this week I chose the one from Richard Cartilage, and I know you had answered this in the comments, but he said, who, if anyone, should end Brian Cage's streak? You know, and I, th I find this to be a good question, and it's tough because I, I, I think it's not a matter of if, but when they decide to put a championship on him, I guess one could assume maybe it's leading towards the X Division title. If they're going to go that route, I would say Desmond Xavier because it, it looks like there's a little bit of a story where, you know, he he's just almost there, you know, giving all he can, but he can't get over the hump. So maybe that's a guy that I would say. Otherwise, you know, it, it's really tough. I don't think there's anyone right now that because with, with the push that Brian Cage has got, whoever beats him, that's going to give them the a big rub. And. So, so, you know, just looking at the roster, I don't know who could really benefit from that rub. So, I mean, if I just had to say just right out the top of my head, I'll say Desmond Xavier. But, I mean, I think we just have to see more how things uh, pan out. And then I'd probably be able to give a better answer. Because, I mean, I would say Moose too. But I'm like, Moose doesn't need that big, big rub. It needs to be somebody young, up and coming that can really benefit from that. So, I'll say Desmond Xavier. Uh, for my answer, I, I can agree with you partly that I don't think Moose should be anywhere near Brian Cage, certainly not beating him or ending any streak. I don't mind if it's a couple of years down the line and, you know, he's, he's eaten a couple of losses along the way. But Moose is not the guy who should be taking that, that streak. streak. Um, I, I said on the comments section that I don't actually think anyone on the roster at the moment is deserving to take that streak. That's not to say that I want to see Brian Cage just eat through the roster and, you know, be the world champion. I think that he'd be ideally suited to to being in the X Division and holding that title for a long time. Uh, who I want to see take it, I think it will be someone outside of the current roster. You know, I, I just don't think there's anyone on there at the moment who I could potentially see doing that. Possibly Eli Drake further on down the line, but I'd like to see um, Cage go on till maybe even Slammiversary next year or even Bound for Glory next year as undefeated. And I have no problem with him winning the, the X Division title and then losing in a multi-man match but going after the guy who's eliminated him or something like that. So he, he can vacate the belt after holding it a long time but, but just going on 
to the main event at some point. So, yeah, brilliant question. And, uh, yeah, my answer is no one. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't really answer it, does it? But there you go. Uh, just before we finish on, on the comments from last week, there, there was one final one I did want to say thank you to. And that was, uh, I, I, I always struggle with some of these names, but I think it's, Crynigma or Crenigma or something like that. It's like Chris and then Enigma on the end. And uh, the only reason I wanted to highlight him and thank him was that he picked up on uh, Tito Ortiz also being the guy behind the uh, the X uh, symbol and that the people who are being knocked out backstage. So I'm glad someone listens to the show and agrees with me that it's going to be Tito Ortiz. Although I was a little disappointed in our listeners that we didn't have the hashtag Adam Greater Than Row trending on twitter at any point but anyway never mind that's the thing for another day right let's dive into the show row shall we what did you think of this week's show uh i thought it was a nice show i mean i'm a big fan of these special pay-per-view like events but with that said i found some of the booking questionable yeah i'm sure we'll get that into that um as we go through the show um i thought it was a great show and i do like when we used to have the TV specials before, they didn't really feel like TV specials. I, I don't know about you if you felt the same way. They just felt like it's a normal episode of Impact, but we're calling it No Surrender this week um, or Final Resolution or something like that. The ones that they've done recently have felt more like um, pay-per-views just because you've got less talking segments, all these kind of things that you would usually have on an impact. And they do have a bigger match feel. So I, I really enjoyed the show. And it's been, a, I think it was a vast improvement over the last couple of weeks. So uh, I, I thought it was very good. But yeah, should we uh, should we dive into the segments? Unless there's anything that uh, you want to say before we do that? No, let's get into it, man. Okay, so uh, I'm saying let's get into it. And uh, guess what? I forgot to even get the results up on my phone. So, uh, yeah, how did the show start? I started with Sanjay Dutt, didn't it, uh, addressing the roster. So what did you make of this? Um, I thought in it kind of added a new layer to the whole who's doing these type of attacks. I mean, for one thing, I was just thinking we already know between now or before Impact concludes – Sanji's gonna be knocked out. It's just, it's just given. But I really like just uh, how PD, PD's involvement, you know, really backing up Sanjay. It kind of added a layer and made you wonder if maybe he had something to do with it. And once we get into it later, I mean, you'll see where I'm going with it. But uh, yeah, I, I found it to be kind of uh, funny because this is the first time we've seen Sanjay in some time, isn't it? Yes, yeah, since he was on commentary. I think, uh, I don't think he's appeared on the show since then. I can't even remember the reason why we said he was removed from commentary. Was he attacked or something like that? I can't honestly remember. Uh, but he just disappeared off commentary, didn't he? Yeah, and because Callis had came in and had taken over, they didn't really explain anything. But yeah, you're right. It, it was really strange having P.T. Williams <laughs> as someone who's now been implicated in it. I, I uh, you know, we were talking about Desmond Xavier being small last week, and you said Peter Williams is smaller. So it's hard to think that the biggest, the, sorry, the smallest guy on the roster is the one going around uh, attacking all these dudes. Um, uh, well, having said that, you know, next week, next week we always want to have Mandrews coming back and saying he's the he's the the, the, the number one suspect. But yeah, uh, we'll get into it. Um, but funny enough, last week we were talking about Cult of Lee. Who could we see joining? And I suggested P.T. Williams. So obviously uh, someone at Impact is listening to me and is featuring P.T. Williams there in a, in a star segment. Right. OK, so we get a quick look at each of tonight's matches um, featuring Pentagon Jr., Austin Aries, all those kind of things. And then we, we kind of got into the Eli Drake versus Scott Steiner match quite quickly after that. And uh, yeah, what, what did you think of this match, by the way? It seemed just something that they really wanted to get the whole Eli Drake Scott Steiner partnership over and done with I I mean I, I don't think because I remember BQ had mentioned he's like man you know he, he didn't really like it and I mean I, I didn't hate it but I just thought Eli could be used so much better like and I think in a situation like this I would, would rather Eli just beat the crap out of Steiner you know not you know them going 50 50 and him having to resort to a chair to beat Steiner but hey you know it gets him to move on from Steiner um, I don't know if this is the last we see from Steiner, but yeah, I think you, Eli could be used in a better capacity than a match like this. The, the one thing I did like about this match is that I, I've been kind of critical of how bad Steiner's been in the ring. I want to say critical in that he doesn't move very well. He's slow. His kicks and punches don't look very strong. But 
Eli Drake had some big suplexes in this, you know, a couple of belly to bellies, uh, um, an overhead one as well. And, you know, Steiner actually looked good in this match. But as he said, the ending, it was a bit screw, not screwy, but I, I don't know who you're supposed to be cheering for and booing in this match. Although the crowd did help us by changing uh, you both suck. Uh, I think that was the chart that was going. But it, as you said, it, it, these are the two best guys on the roster on the mic. And they've put them into something that could have been absolutely fantastic if they'd have given it time. And I don't know if it's the Eli contract situation or if it's the fact they don't trust Steiner, but they could have done so much more with this. They really could have done so much more of this. And I, I just, as we said time and time again, I think Eli's gone. In, and I know he's doing these tapings tonight, but I, I think this, this book was probably the last we've seen of him. Yeah, I know it remains to be seen. I know um, I had actually posted an article on the social media that I read from 401 about their negotiations. And, you know, it was a big topic of conversation as far as, well, he has signed the two month extension. And I said, look, I'm at a point like Eli's my favorite guy on the roster. If he resigns, wonderful. But I'm at the point if he leaves, then he leaves. I mean, you know, we look at you know, there's various names that we've seen depart and we thought, oh, it's going to be a big loss. It's going to be a big loss. I think what Impact has done, I trust the regime now and the brain trust that they're able to create stars. But with that said, and I wish I knew the person's name and I apologize because I hate to take credit from anyone, but I mean, not give credit, but the one thing the company's going to have to be able to do in the foreseeable future, and the the person compared this to ECW, if you don't remember, where when an ECW is losing a lot of its top talent, but they were able to create new stars, they ended up losing too much where guys that probably weren't main event, world title material had to become it by default. And I just hope we don't get to that point. So, I mean, it remains to be seen with Eli Drake. Um... I hope, like I said, I hope he stays because I think he can really be the face of Impact Wrestling. So we just have to see how it plans out. But I feel like the whole the, the whole angle between him and Steiner was really kind of rushed. And it, it probably has to do with the contract situation. I also think that the, the whole angle between Austin Aries and, and Eli Drake has so much more, you know, legs in it. Because, you know, Eli Drake never really got any kind of um, one over on, on Aries the whole time. Basically, Aries, he jobbed to Aries every single match. He didn't job as in, you know, didn't get the offense in, but I don't think he won any kind of contest against him. And, and that, you know, to me, that says, you know, there's so much more in that storyline, especially with, you know, what happened at the end of the show with Austin Aries going full uh, heel. I, I think a, a face uh, Eli Drake would, would, would be great, you know, to, to go up against him. Uh, and I think that's the way that they should go with this, but especially as the alternative is Moose. And that, and to me, and I know I'm very down on Moose, but I just, uh, it doesn't excite me. If Moose was facing Austin Aries, I think it would be, I would enjoy it. But if Moose was the world title holder, I, I would struggle with that. I, it wouldn't draw, it wouldn't draw flies. I, I mean, you know, I don't think, I think when you look at a guy like Aries, like Aries, you know, is great in the ring, you know, ring work wise. And then with Eli, and I know some people are critical of his ring work, but he has that showmanship. I think when you have personalities as such, those are the type of guys that, you know, you can get a, a decent match out of Moose with. But, you know, once again, you know, you can only face somebody so many times and you have to move on. So then, so then what ends up happening is, because I think Moose is getting the title sometime this year. I, I know I had said Slammiversary. I'm still going to push Slammiversary, but I mean, sometime around this year. But what they just have to do is just have the right guys to work with him that could display his strengths and hide some of his weaknesses. I thought the match most recently with Congo Kong it displayed a little more of his weaknesses. I don't think he's at that point yet where he can just work with anybody. So, but yeah, you know, I, I just feel like some of these angles, man, and as we get more into the show, the stuff's been rushed and, you know, maybe it has to do with contract situation or other things un unbeknownst to us, but it's just, it shows because like you said, I mean, why couldn't we get a little bit more of Eli and Austin Aries? So but but just going back to the Moose thing, I, I think that highlights exactly what you were saying about the ECW top stars leaving. Moose is a, is a, a guy who I don't think is ready 
to carry the company, mainly because I don't think there's anyone who's good enough to carry him to make him look good. You know, it's almost like the Magnus situation when he was world champion. You know, he didn't really face it. There was great people on the roster, but he, he was made to be made to be a champion that just didn't look very good uh, because of the people he faced and all these kind of things. And if you put Moose in that position, I think Moose would be more interested in chasing Aries than actually holding the title and running with it. So I, I don't know. Uh, I just don't think he's ready for it because I still don't think he's got a personality or any kind of character. The only time I've liked him was in the America's Top Team angle. That's the only time that Moose has been interesting to me. And I think that was more to do with America's Top Team than, than it was to do with Moose. But there you go. Do you think, and before we move on, do you think, because I really thought some of his best work was when he was grand champion, do you think maybe they elevated him too quickly as far as that? Because I thought that role, they could have really had him be kind of in, kind of similar to what we've seen, seen in with The Miz, for example, being you know holding the mid-card title, title multiple times. You know, sometimes you do that, although I know Miz is a former world champion, but sometimes you can have a guy doing that, and that helps him get to a point where it prepares him for the main event. Do you feel like maybe with some of the departures, it kind of elevated Moose quicker than probably he w should have been? But possibly, yeah. But I also think they made a mistake taking the, the grand championship off Moose, especially giving it to EC3. Uh, I still don't know why they did that. Well, maybe to keep EC3. But uh, yeah, I think Moose could have held that for a bit longer and faced people in the mid card in the same way that The Miz has done, you know, and, and faced... Brian Cage, you know, in the mid-card, faced KM, faced Falabar, faced whoever it may be. I just think they took it off him too soon. Um, the only th one who I can see, you know, who might go ahead of Moose is if they do something with Sammy Callahan or, or something with Eddie Edwards. Um, but once again, it, it, it's, it's the lack of faces. With, with Austin Aries now being heel, it's a lack of faces in the main event that, that's that's missing. And the only one that is, is Moose. Um, I can't think of anyone unless they turn Eli Drake, manage again to stay. The other problem you've got is that you know that Johnny Impact's not going to be at the tapings uh, for the next four weeks because he got married yesterday. Congratulations, Johnny. My invitation got lost, although I have bought something on your wedding list for you. So there you go. Well lucky done. man, lucky man. <laughs> yeah, well done, Tyre. Well done, Johnny. Uh, so well done, Tyre Impact. I'm guessing that's her name there. Um, <laughs> it's better than Taya Mundo, isn't it? Well, I don't know, actually. They're both pretty rotten. Okay, uh, so let's move on. <laughs> we got off on a sidetrack there. We ended up talking about Moose after talking about the Eli Drake and uh, Steiner match. But Steiner, thank you for your contributions. I think you were great value this time. And I actually wish I would have kept you around for longer because I think you've got a lot to offer the mid card because you can make any feud interesting and i wish they would just pay him to to get into nothing feuds even if you know it would have been interesting to see steiner in the x division you know bullying the x division stars you know saying you're weedy wimps you know that kind of thing that would have been interesting to me and he, and he would be able to add a bit of character to guys like desmond xavier you know those, those kind of people who haven't shown anything on the mic yet or any side of personality but a feud with steiner that, that would have got a load of the X guys, X division guys over. Do you, do you agree? I don't. I wouldn't go that much. I think his role at this point, I I think he him being a manager would would you know for a team or a particular wrestler, I think that would be the the best way to use him. But do you agree that he could have stayed around and and, and he was actually he seemed in check this time. He didn't do anything stupid, uh, and you know he just seemed like a good guy to have around. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree. That's what I say. You, you know, you can keep him around. I wouldn't have him with in feuds. I would probably just use him as a mouthpiece. You know, you can, like I said, whether it's a team or have him, you know, uh, accompanying a wrestler, somebody he sees as a future. So, but I mean, we we have to see. Who knows? Maybe he'll stay because you know this is the second time that we've seen him come back. It seems like he has a good relationship with the higher ups. Yeah. So anyway, let us know in the comments what you guys think, whether you'd have liked to have seen him stick around, whether you think that he's a waste of, of valuable money to Anthem. Uh, just just drop some comments down below. All right. Uh, moving on. So we then had, uh, what's her name? Tessa Blanchard versus Madison Rain. And I, the biggest, the biggest problem I had with this, and it was nothing to do with the match because I thought the match was well booked, uh, although I hate the ending, but, you know, we'll come on to that in a second. I thought the match was well booked because they did, 
make her look strong in defeat because it was a lucky roll up, etc. The thing I hated the most was the commentary because last week or two weeks ago, Josh let everyone know that she was his wife. And yet in this one, he didn't mention it at all. So someone's beating up his wife in the ring and he's not like saying, oh, someone's got to stop this or something like that. And he, he completely ignored the fact there are a couple now, which which kind of annoyed me because I was just waiting for him to say something. And let's face it, if your wife was getting thrown around like a rag doll in the ring, you, you would go down there and help, wouldn't you? And that would have been a better way if you'd have caused a distraction to allow for the roll up. That would have made more sense if you wanted to go with that kind of finish. But anyway, what, what were your thoughts? Okay, uh, let me get to the, the stuff I liked. I really thought this, they really did an amazing job making Tessa look strong. I actually am of the mindset with the state of the knockout division as it is with so many of the top names on the shelf. If they wanted to put a rocket on Tessa's back and put the knockouts championship on her, I'm all on board. I, I think she has that, that uh, <laughs> I hate to use the it factor, just the look. You know, her mannerisms, the, her ring work, she knows how to work a camera and knows how to work live TV. And I think that's what you kind of need in a champion. So hopefully they don't take too long to put put her in that position. But the ending, man, I, you know, and I almost, and I try to be fair with my criticisms, but I remember the Impact Twitter handle had tweeted something out saying, well, you know, Tessa was overconfident. That's why she lost, like, this is her second televised match and you have her lose. I mean, I would have preferred them to go the disqualification route. And then on top of that, even with the fluke roll up, you know, there was nothing where Tessa was attacking. Like, I needed to see more from it. I feel like they really cut uh the legs from beneath her and i know look it's just one loss and i know nowadays with wrestling wins and losses don't matter as much but i really thought this was one of the question questionable booking decisions why would you have her lose her second match they should have done some type of no contest and let this continue and you know with madison ray nothing against her but this is someone who's barely just come back and you have her beat you know one of the biggest names that you just picked up i just thought it was bad booking well, we, we had a feeling that this was going to happen, uh, but I, I was actually OK with it in the end because of the nature of it. But faces shouldn't be winning by roll ups. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's a heel thing. Um, but anyway, it, it is what it is. But as you said, Tessa looked excellent in defeat in this match. And and that's the only, I suppose, um, you know, thing that you can salvage from it is, is that she did look really really good and i don't think it hurts her another little criticism about the whole booking of this by the way was in the build-up they had madison rain saying yeah tess is a bully she's been in there bullying people she thinks that she's got a god-given right because you know that she's better than everyone else now correct me if i'm wrong but wasn't that madison rain's gimmick when you <laughs> or and the beautiful people's gimmick yeah once upon a time ago the queen yeah she dubs herself the queen the queen bee it it's it just you know and I, I apologize for interrupting i just think what and not that i'm you know trying to overreact or anything i just kind of just started just you know for somebody they they could have done more with it even with you know the fluke like i said if they would have some post-match thing where you know tessa kind of just loses it and just beats the tar out of her i'd have been okay with that but i mean what in you know, we I guess we have to see. But honest, honest question: Do you think this feud continues, or do you think we see uh, Madison try to challenge for the Knockouts Championship next? Next, honest opinion. I, I haven't even thought about it, uh, and well, thinking about it live on air here. I can't see Madison going into the title picture. Well, actually, I, I take that back. She might go into the title picture as cannon fodder because. I can't see her getting the title, um, you know, and Sue Young needs to defend it against someone with a name, name value. You know, there's no point putting her in there with uh, Kiara Hogan or someone like that who she's just going to walk through. And, and that's one criticism of the knockout division is that they haven't got any names who are right to be fed to Sue Young. So so maybe that's the reason why they've done it. I, I don't know. But yeah, <sighs> Whatever happens, I don't want to see Madison Rain in the ring for too long because I don't think she looks credible compared to the wrestlers that they've got in the knockout division now who just all look so far ahead of her in, in regards to character development and also physique, not physique, because she, well, physique, yeah, not, not as anything wrong with her physique. She, she's so cut, it's unbelievable, but she's tiny. 
And because of that, she just doesn't look credible as someone, you know, who could beat you in a fight. So there you go. That was my answer. What about you? What do you think? I mean, I honestly think I could see her moving on. And because like I had stated with the knockouts division right now, with a lot of the top names on the shelf, it's really thin right now. So this is an opportunity to really build Sue Young, build Tessa, and then, you know, lesser extent, Kiera. So then once you get those big names coming back, and I mean, obviously, LA too, but once you get those big names coming back, then you'll really have a strong knockouts division. But I, I think the direction they're going to go with Madison is they're probably going to have her try to compete for the knockouts championship. And I really think, like, and like I said, once again, I really think if you're going to have her beat Tessa, they need to have some kind of feud where Tessa's getting the upper hand since she's the young, promising talent. It just, I, like I said, and I know some people obviously have different opinions and listeners, be sure to share your thoughts. You know, I really am interested to see what you guys think, but I just thought it was a poor decision to have Tessa lose her second match in with Impact. All right, let's go on to a segment I really, really like now. We had the LAX Lair. And uh, you said about Eddie Kingston last week, you know, really showing some acting skills. And once again, this segment w was fantastic. Really liked this segment. And, um, you know, it started off with Eddie coming in, gave a bottle of booze uh, to, to Tito, Tito, Tito Ortiz. Yeah, Tito Ortiz and uh, Santana. Uh, I think Ortiz took a swig. Then he opened up the case <laughs> and the two guys looked in and went, whoa. So there, there's a question for our viewers. Hashtag what's in the case? Uh, I certainly know what I think is in the case. I think it was a burrito because that's how I look when someone brings me a burrito in a case. I go, whoa, that looks amazing. So uh, let us know what you think in the segments below. Hashtag what's in the case. Uh, and he also brought two, what did he call them, pieces of meat? Is that what he called them? I can't remember. Ass. Uh, <laughs> pieces of ass, sorry. Pieces of ass. And I've got to say, Ortiz lucked out on this one because the one that Santana uh, got was was way better looking. Uh, but anyway, so he bought those. And uh, it obviously led to a segment where he's saying, I've got another two asses lined up for you next weekend. Obviously being the cult of Lee. But I thought this was excellent. I really enjoyed this segment. Yeah, you know, seeing Eddie Kingston come back and using him at this role for this time. It's wonderful. I'm really interested in LAX again. And I really want to see what's going to happen once uh, Conan and maybe Homicide come back. You know, I, something tells me that uh, King, you know, the relationship, something, he's he's uh, kind of misleading these guys a little bit. But I'm interested to see how it plays out. But wonderful. And it looks like they're going to try to get back on the winning ways facing Code of Lee next week. I keep going on about Santana being great. And, you know, I say that he's a future world champion, solo world champion. But he, it's really nice mannerisms after Ortiz took a swig and then handed over to Santana. He kind of looked at him, you know, looking at the germs on the bottle kind of thing. He does really nice touches like that. And, uh, yeah, so there you go. So remember, folks, hashtag what's in the case? My guest being a burrito. Right. OK, then we had a vignette of Brian Cage showing his destruction thus far before the Xavier Brian Cage match. So, what did you make of this? Because I've got some views on this one, and I've got a feeling they're going to differ to yours. You know, it was a nice little showcase of what he's been able to do. Um, I think we're getting in that territory with Brian Cage. It's time for him to kind of have a, a real serious feud. I think that's one thing he hasn't had, I guess. You could say his one with Lashley, but... I really want to see him work some type of program, a long program. So that, and then after that, you know, start challenging for one of these championships. Yeah, I mean, well, he's obviously got the X Division championship. So that will be quite interesting because obviously if they're going to continue the streak. Then he's going to have to take the title, surely. But uh, the match itself was fine. It was OK. But I also think it was Cage's worst match in Impact so far. And I know he had a couple of jobber matches at the beginning, but this for excuse me, this for me was um, he didn't look very slick in this match. You know, it looked like there was a few botches in the middle, and even um, the drill claw didn't look right. It didn't look like how he usually hits it. It looked awkward. So uh, to me, he looks injured in this match because I think that's why he missed the early sets of tape, isn't he? Uh, and why he's been doing the world tour. But you know, he had tape all up his leg and up his, his lower back. So maybe it's because he was injured, but. I didn't enjoy this match as much as I thought I was going to. And he certainly didn't look as fluid as he has done. Yeah, this was another questionable booking. Like, and I know we've talked about this and I hate to be the dead horse, but I know they try to 
portray the X Division as is no limits, no weight class. But you look at majority of the guys, they're small guys, small in stature. Not saying that they can't work, but and that's the reason why. And I know before I said, hey, I wouldn't mind seeing Brian Cage in the X Division. This match, I don't want to see him in the X Division. Nothing against him, but I just think he's so much powerful compared to the guys that they have in the division they put the belt on him essentially he's gonna be having the belt hostage because even though i said if you ask me who could i see break the streak maybe if he worked a program with desmond xavier and desmond xavier took were to take the belt off of him fine but i just really think it, he, he would be miscasted and I know some people can compare it to when they had Samoa Joe but Samoa Joe you know had some matches with people whether it was your AJ Styles or Christopher Daniels where you know it looked believable that they had a shot I mean you saw in this match where Desmond Xavier he went for the final flash didn't even get a one count just you know just kicked out of it and it's like oh it's gonna be one of those type of things and you know maybe he is injured so you know, you give him the benefit of the doubt, but I really think, and not to minimize the X Division, because I love the X Division, but I think Brian Cage is above it. I think he needs to be, if they're going to have him challenging for a championship, you know, while the world championship's probably too early, what they decide with the grand championship, I would rather than him, them, you know, have him challenge for it, put the belt on him, let him run with it for however many long. And that's something, if, especially if you're going to do the, the world tour, you know, for the times maybe you can't get him on the taping, he could defend it there. I just feel like this this match, it did more of a disservice for Desmond Xavier. Even though he was able to get some stuff in, he, he really had zero shot. Mm. Well, that, that was it. I mean, it was like an extended squash match at times, wasn't it? Um, but at the same time, you know, Brian Cage can make people look good, but he didn't particularly make Desmond look good in this. And that was my problem with it. But, you know, I've never been that high on Desmond anyway. I think there's there's people I prefer in the X Division. So I'd have preferred to see P.T. Williams in this match, like I said last week, to be honest. But, but there you go. Um, so, yeah, uh, going back to my Steiner thing, by the way, that would have been really good. You know, if Steiner had been working that program with the X Division, you know, saying that all you X Division guys are wimps, blah, blah, blah. None of you can beat me. And uh, then have Brian Cage saying, I'm X Division as well, and taking Steiner out that way. But anyway, we're back into fantasy booking there. Right. OK, so, oh, just an interesting thing at the end was Brian Cage. Obviously, they're lining him up to be a face by the fact that he got in and held up. Uh, Xavier's hands and, and and this is one of the problems that I've had with Brian Cage is that you don't know his motives at the moment he just goes in there and beats people up you don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy and you know Don Callis often goes on you know podcasts or conferences these kind of things he's, they've got another Slammiversary one in two days time and he does these things and uh, and you just think you know, he talks about old school wrestling, you know, heels should be heels, you know, they shouldn't, you know, sign autographs, these kind of things, they should they should live the role and, you know, there's too much grey area. Wrestling should be about good guys and bad guys. And Brian Cage is a perfect example of we don't really know what he is, other than the fact he held up Xavier's hand. We don't really know if he's a heel or a face or what his motives are. And, and that's, that is a problem that they need to redress. And hopefully they will in the next tapings. Do you, do you have any views on that? Well, he, I think when he came out, they had him, they had him, uh, he was uh, slapping hands with the fans. So I think he's a face, but he's not, you know, a lot of times with a lot of faces, we get them in the ring, cutting promos, trying to uh, really butter up the crowd. So I think it's safe to say he's face because Desmond Xavier's face and he rose his hand, you know, his arm, raised his arm just to show his respect. So I, I think it's safe to say he's face. You know, normally heels, they'll go and attack a face. So I, I think he's a face. No, I, I, it's definitely is a face. But I, I think that we just know, we just know what his motivation is because at the moment we don't know anything about him. Um, I, I think even in his program with Lashley, I don't think he talked in that. He just sat on the bleachers eating food as Lashley talked. I, I, have we heard him speak even? I don't know. No, and but, I think that's the route that they're going with him because if you notice when Lashley called him out, it was Lashley kind of, you know, talking and he was playing the hill. So it looks like they're just going, he's a face, but he just a man of many words. And I think it's work, it works for him. Well, uh, we'll agree to disagree on that one. It, it does, well, it, it does work, but I still want to see more from him. I want to see, see his motivation and those kind of things. You know, does he want the X Division title? Does he want the world title? You know, and we don't know any of these things. And he either gets a mouthpiece um, or he, I, I don't know. Anyway, let us know what you think, listeners. 
Right. Uh, we had a segment next. Mackenzie Mitchell and Austin Aries backstage um, pretty much talks for itself. What, what did you think of this? Yeah, I didn't have too much to really comment on. I mean, typical, you know, really to the point promo. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the Grand Championship because, you know, it's not a spoiler to say that Aries won the main event. If you listen to this show before watching the show, then uh, sorry for spoiling it. But um, I wonder if they're going to once again let it fade in the background, those kind of things. And and funny enough, listeners, uh, this Monday is the Slammiversary press conference, just to let you all know. And uh, as a channel, as a program, whatever you want to call us, we were invited to it to submit some videos, uh, some video questions. And, and one of my questions was to Austin Aries, uh, what does he think of the Grand Championship now that he has both belts and what does he intend to do with it? So if that is streaming live on Twitch or wherever it may be, check it out. You never know. You might get to hear my dulcet tones yet again. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no, if, I could, no. if I could add something about that, and I know I always bring it up because I'm a fan of the title. It, it's just I'm confused and I would just wish we got more clarification because as we get to the main event, he was even announced Grand Champion and, you know, he walked to the belt with, I mean, he walked to the ring, I'm sorry, with the championship. And it just, if they were writing the championship off, they wouldn't even have him come out with it. They wouldn't even announce it. Even Mackenzie uh, Mitchell in the backstage segment said, "Here we're here with grand champion Austin Aries. And I, I guess what just bothers me is somebody of his caliber holding that belt. You know, it, sh it, c it could mean so much more because he's a main event guy. And why they haven't done anything with it is just... You know, it's baffling to me. I mean, I, I, you know, they could, he could easily vacate it and maybe we get a tournament, which I, I really would love for the company to have some type of tournament, you know, reestablish the mid card, you know, get some, some of these guys something to do or, you know, just have them cut something like, well, here, you know, and just do away with it or hell, just don't even announce it. Even in some of the program, I mean, the promos where they had a list, all the champions, they have him listed right there with the belt. So it doesn't sound like something they're doing away with because normally you wouldn't even make mention of it. So I think that's just what kind of just bothers me. Cause it's like, you, you know, you have us believing that it means nothing yet. This guy's coming out here. He's being announced, you know, he's being displayed with it. And there's really no kind of clarification. I mean, I'm waiting for someone to come out and challenge him for it, but we've yet to see that. Yeah, absolutely. I hope they keep it around because they desperately need a mid-card belt, but there you go. We'll see. All right. Um, up next, we had Ali versus Sue Young in a last rights match. Now, I really enjoyed this. I, I love the production on it, but there was uh, one thing that became apparently clear about Sue Young because of her reactions to Ali coming out in the face paint. Uh, and that thing is, is that Sue Young doesn't watch television and doesn't watch Impact. Uh, and she doesn't have any social media because otherwise she would have seen Ali in the makeup all week. But it was a surprise to her. You'd have thought Sue Young would have had a, a TV, wouldn't you, to watch, you know, The Bachelorette or something like that to get some tips. Bearing in mind she's a, a dead bride. So uh, anyway, yeah, so it, it was a brilliantly produced section, I thought. Uh, I, I loved Ali's makeup on it and I liked some of her mannerisms. It was a bit hokey at times, but the match itself I thought was pretty poor. You said pretty what? I'm sorry, I didn't catch poor. that. Pretty poor. poor. You know, I liked the innovate, and I mean, I know it's it's a match that's been done in the past, but as I was talking about with the knockouts, I said I'd really like to see them try some matches that, you know, we probably don't typically see in women wrestling nowadays. And I thought something like this is one of those where while the match itself probably wasn't, you know, a home run, I really thought that innovation of it all was, was what made it kind of special. And it just leaves us hanging because, you know, we're going to assume now that Ali is being buried along with Rosemary. So what happens next? And... You know, congratulations to Young capturing the knockout championship. Once again, I think with the knockouts division being thin right now, you know, with a lot of the injuries and in the to the top uh, knockouts, um, this gives an opportunity for your Sue Youngs, your Tessa Blanchards, your Kiara Hogan's to, you know, really give them an opportunity to really um, build them up. So then when you get Rosemary, you get Sienna back, you know, we'll really have a solid six to seven or so knockouts being able to you know challenge for the championship so yeah i mean as far as the match like i said it wasn't 
nothing to write about, but I really just like the the creativity of it all. I thought that was great and what the knockouts division needs. And I hope in the foreseeable future, they're able to do matches as such. Yeah, I totally agree that, uh, you know, the, the, the creativity behind it all was very good. And the one thing I did like, which I don't think we've seen from Su Young before, was her use of the mandible claw. Uh, I can't remember that move being busted out since well, it would have been Mankind, wouldn't it? Was the last person, or Cactus Jack, whoever it was, to, to use it. I can't think of any other wrestler who's used it. Dude Love. <laughs> Dude Love, oh, what, one of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I think she calls it the purge. And I, I remember when she first pulled the, the glove out, I had wondered. But then I remembered at Redemption, she had used it on Braxton Sutter. I think that's wonderful. That gives her another move in her arsenal. Because, you know, she normally uses a panic switch. But to have something like that where I mean, she essentially knocks Allie out unconscious, I thought that's pretty cool. You know, let me ask, and maybe it's something I didn't catch on the commentary. Did Have they ever elaborated on why she's the undead bride, or they just kind of just been rolling with it? <laughs> they just rolled with it. They've just said, she's, you know, oh, she's known as the undead bride, and that's about it. Uh, do, do you know, actually? Do, do you know what the story is behind it? No, but I think, and I, I really want to see how it plays out, because I think now that she's champion, I think they're really going to really... Uh, well, at least I'd hope, I guess, me being optimistic, they're going to dive in. I'd love for them to kind of show like a, a vignette of her maybe being at the altar or something happening in, you know, that, you know, some tragic events made her become the undead bride. I think that really add some layers to her character because, you know, they've been dubbing her the undead bride, but, you know, how did she become the undead bride? And maybe I'm looking too much into it, but I really think, especially now since she's champ, you know, knockouts champion now, they can yeah. do that with her, give her, a, you know, a real backstory, get us like, oh, okay. Absolutely. I mean, they did it with Rosemary and Bran, didn't they, where he went back to the barn where she kept on being visited by someone who was a bit rapey from memory, uh, although they never really kind of finished that storyline. That They just threw Bram in a truck and that was the last we saw of Bram. And he was obviously the same truck that Samoa Joe went into uh, that one time. Um, yeah, so I really like those, by the way, the Bram and Rosemary segments. I thought they were fantastic. And I was really disappointed when they just kind of ended very, very quickly. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully they'll do something to kind of explain it. I'm guessing that, uh, you know, our fans, our listeners, fans? We don't have fans, we have listeners. Uh, we'll let us know in the comments section below. But, yeah, I might go do some research on that myself. Uh, but hopefully there'll be some explanation as to what has happened. So there we go. All right. Um, so after the match, we did, had a Pentagon Junior promo, which they should have been doing for the last six weeks. But we finally got one. It was all right, wasn't it? I don't think we're going to be seeing him around much more to really care. <laughs> so it was what it was. Uh, but they should have been doing this to make us interested in this guy for the, since he's held the belt. And this has been, I think, the biggest failing of impact over the last couple of months is that they haven't made us care about Pentagon Junior at all agreed couldn't say it said it anymore better yep so then we had uh matthew and callis once again going about the red graphic and uh, as soon as they went to the section talking about it you knew it was going to cut away at some point to pt williams looking very suspicious <laughs> lying next to sanjay Dutt. um and yeah that was that bit um do you think it's pt it just lead me leads me to believe because I, I had mentioned before I had thought it was going to be just a one one person, but I could see some sort of stable, maybe a collection of wrestlers or some that they have debuting, and then maybe Petey's kind of the the head of the group. I mean, one I was thinking about, but it just wouldn't match with the logos. Maybe they bring back Team Canada, like a new Team Canada, so some of the Canadian wrestlers they all form up a group but yeah i, I thought it, it it added something interesting it, it's going to be funny to see how it plays out but i will say with all they've done on the build on this you know hopefully it's not a letdown i know that's what we had mentioned before because mm. i think they really got a hit on this because if it's just some regular joe schmo i mean i think it's gonna like bq would say go over like a fart in church tito ortiz we know it's going to be him anyway just going back to team canada would you like to see Eric Young back? Nah, because I, I feel like he was one of those guys and a lot of those guys. And I think when we see, you know, some of the departures, when you've accomplished everything you could, you can under imp, in impact, I mean, there's really nothing left to do. I mean, essentially, you're just going to be that good hand that puts over talent. 
you know, the exception was James Storm just because I felt like he could have done more because when you think about what he had accomplished, he never really had that good title run. You know, his was relatively short. But I think with him, you know, and I know he's over in the other company, you know, maybe that's better for him at this point. I think a lot of those guys, if you were to bring back just, you know, if just fantasy booking, if you were to bring back Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Eric Young, uh, Bobby Roode, um, whoever I have, you know, haven't mentioned, I don't think they would fit. Okay, East, well, I mean, okay, <laughs> I guess you could see. cheek, that was tug and cheek. I, I mean, I guess you could even say him. I don't think they fit the new impact now. And I know that's crazy, cause especially when you talk about AJ Styles, because the guy's just incredible. I just don't think they fit what impact it, where impact is now. I think they represent TNA. Like, TNA and impact, I know, you know, some you know some people still consider it the same but we see now it's two different companies with two different visions and i just don't think those guys would fit in in impact's vision now i mean unless you're pairing them you know with guys that you're trying to push but i just don't think like i would hate to see if they were just to bring aj back and put him in the main event picture and seeing him go over guys like some of these younger guys i just don't think those guys would fit under this what do you think I, you know, I get what you're saying, but I would welcome back every single one of those guys, bar EC3. He's the only one of all of those that I just don't think fits in, you know, just because he's been there so recently. Love to see James Storm back. Love to see Bobby Roode back because Bobby Roode's been horrifically used by, by WWE. Eric Young, I was always a huge Eric Young fan, and he's not doing anything over at NXT, so I'd like to see him back. Drew Galloway, not bothered. Apart from that, though, yeah, AJ, Bobby, Samoa. Yeah, Eric Young, I would have any one of those back in a heartbeat, and I would be quite happy to shot, hot shot them to the to the top belt as well. You know, I, w- I really would. Maybe not Eric Young, but the others, absolutely. Agree to disagree. That's okay, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not for one for you know people. I understand why they went over to WWE, and I don't hold grudges. You know, Buddy Ray, I wouldn't want to see him back ever. Um, but you know, most of the guys who got over, I've got over for you know, for the right reasons in their life and those kind of things, you know, and, and as you say, TNA and Impact were at different points when, when they left, you know, with regards to money, the product, the storylines, the stability. But I, I think that every one of those could come back and be a credible return and someone that the fans would absolutely love to have back. I don't think there's any one of those that, that, that the crowd wouldn't love to have back other than maybe Galloway and EC3. I think they're the only two. But anyway... We, we, we agree, disagree, as you said. Anyway, back to uh, Under Pressure. So, main event time. And well, we, we missed a segment. Oh, sorry, yeah. Well, we... Oh, yes. Oh, how could I miss this segment? The one where the guy goes on camera and says he's going to murder someone. This is this is awesome. <laughs> this was jaw-droppingly. Did he really say that? Um, yeah, so we had um, Alicia and Eddie talking backstage and... It was good to see Eddie completely delusional, saying, oh, great, once I murder him, we're going to be back to normal. Everything's going to be OK. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I am absolutely draw agape at this one. What, 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 do you want to say anything about it? Yeah. Let, and let me just run real quick, because I think the one thing we did forget to add is the they actually had the GWN flashback was Steam versus Abyss. I, I forgot the event, but it was actually a last rights match in... Um, yeah, there's really nothing much to say about it. I think. But you, you know, not. actually, you're right. I, I, I watched it as well, and um, Sting really bled heavily in that one, didn't he? Uh, it's not on my recap here, so apologies that I missed that out. I forgot all about it. But uh, once again, the crowd was over. I mean, it was once again very hokey. Um, and I'm guessing they showed that match because of the last rights match. But uh, once again, it just highlights how much the crowd were into it back then, and compared to the Sue Young Ali match where the crowd. I don't think we're particularly into it. And and I know BQ did this whole thing last week on his B-side show uh, about you know having to move out of, uh, of Orlando. And, and that just shows you that they do need to. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So now back back to uh, the segment with Eddie. You know, I've, I feel like we're getting to the point with this feud between him and Callahan. I don't want to say it's on his last legs, but they kind of have to find something to do with him because eventually, you know, it's time for them to move on to bigger and better things. So with what we're getting next week, I wonder if this is going to be the blow off. Or are they going to try to pull one more match out of it? 
I'm interested to see how it plays out because, you know, obviously him talking about he's going to murder him. I mean, I have one idea that where how this could end, where they can extend the feud. But I just really want to see what we're going to get. Yeah, I think did you mentioned that Alicia turns on Eddie uh, to extend it. Is that the one? Yeah, but I mean, now that they're talking about, mur- you know, trying to murder and stuff, <laughs> I can see something funny where the cops come and <laughs> they take him away. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I don't know. I'm just probably just reaching a little bit, but I'm really just interested to see because I really think if they're going to blow off this feud, we need to get some type of match, you know, whether it's at Slammiversary or if we if they have another special they anticipate doing and that'd be the main event. You know, I, I would go uh, Last Man Standing or... Uh, metal mayhem well they said it's going to be in the woods and those kind of things which leads me to think it's going to be like a final deletion you know hardy compound kind of thing um the way the only way i can see they get out of this and end this feud is that it gets to a point where you know sammy's down on the ground and eddie stood above him with a huge boulder ready to bring it down on his head and then alicia says stop it eddie and he throws the rock aside and says that's it I, and walks away and, and that's his redemption. That's the only way I can see this finishing. But or unless he murders Sammy Callahan, of course, and goes to jail. Right. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting wording. And yeah, I, I don't know if I feel utterly comfortable with it. And I know I said I wanted uh, Impact to be something different to, to WWE and that be more edgy and adult. But I don't know. I just felt uncomfortable with the segment for for its stupidity. Right. Main event and. Well, um, let me get your thoughts first. Let me get your thoughts. I'm just going to cut to the chase, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but this bored me. I literally fell asleep multiple times, and when I woke up, it was uh, Aries. He had worded the ending of the match. It was just something just didn't click for me, and I love what Austin Aries has brought to the company, but I just really just feel like this was a, a failed experiment putting the world championship on Pentagon, and this is was, was them trying to fix the mistake that they probably thought that they made putting the championship on Pentagon, and I understand why they did it you know, for the shock value, but it didn't go over like how they anticipated. And in part, some of that's their fault because I think they could have really taken the time to really get us fans who aren't familiar with Lucha Underground to get to know who Pentagon is. I've been, you know, an advocate of, you know, them, you know, portraying stuff for the casual view viewer. You can't assume that everybody out you know watches these other companies some of us only watch like myself i only watch impact wrestling at this day and you know this point in my life i don't you know i don't really watch other feds and not that i have anything against them but it's just you know with you know all the other things i have to do like i'm able to make time on thursdays or record it or devote you know an hour to two hours of watching impact so i just think when you know you're making some of these decisions You know, you got to let some of us fans who are unfamiliar with some of these people that you're trying to push, give us an idea who they are, because otherwise, you know, you get something like this. So, you know, back to the match, it just, I don't know, it just bored me. I was just like, you know what, just put the belt back on Aries, because I trust that they'll have something better, you know, for the world champion in Aries than they did with Pentagon. Well, I am going to disagree with you on Andy. And he said there's a popular opinion of yours because I thought the match was very good. Um, And I even really enjoyed the ending, how it went to a double count act twice because it showed these guys are absolutely perfectly matched. And I really liked that storytelling. I thought it was a really good piece of storytelling. You know, and before that, it was all very, very good as well, the the, the wrestling in-ring action. And But for me, the highlight was the ending. I just thought it was fantastic. I really did. In that, it, it told a story. In that, before we didn't know. Once again, Ares is supposed to be a heel. I know he's been showing more heel-like things recently, but you know he's playing that tweener role where the crowd love him and these kind of things. But he went full-blown heel, and that cemented it. You know, he is now a heel, and I think that they did that very, very well. And it showed that he couldn't beat him by playing by the rules. So for me, I thought. It was it was a brilliant main event. I really really enjoyed it, and uh, although it um, you know it, it maybe went a bit long, but it should do. You know, it's for the world title. I, I just I just thought it, it, it was great storytelling, and you're quite right. They completely botched Pentagon Junior's reign. 
they they have made no one care about him other than the people who are huge wrestling fans already who know his other work outside nothing about his impact works has made me think i want this guy to carry on being champion so failed experiment whatever you want to call it shock value to get some eyes on the product i don't know but they've done the right decision getting the belt off him putting it back on aries and they've finally given aries a character and I, and I know he is entertaining on the mic and all these kind of things and he's had a character but now we know who austin aries is he's the heel that will cheat to win and that's i'm absolutely fine with that so for me i thought it was good yeah that i think that was the positive i will say with, that i take away from it but it's just you just kind of just look at it you know you take the belt off of eli okay and you put it on austin aries you know i thought we were going to get a long you know a long program with him and eli we don't get that you then take the belt off of Austin Aries and put it on Pentagon okay I thought it was odd but I said hey that's cool you know it'll get some new eyes on the product Pentagon defends against Eli and beats him and then he ends up dropping the championship to Austin Aries so it that's why it, what kind of leads me to believe like they kind of realized like this wasn't working because they quickly put the belt back on Austin Aries so you know we didn't get and I, I thought when they were putting the belt on Pentagon you know before I realized you know with say Johnny Impact uh, you know, not going to be at the tapings. I thought we were going to get a couple of title defenses before they decided to have him drop it, you know, I guess back to Austin Aries. But it seems like they realized, hey, this isn't working. And Austin Aries is heel being world champion. I think it fits his whole belt collector gimmick. So, but now the question is, who are going to be the faces challenging him? Like, I know you had, you know, you're down on Moose, but excuse me, for example, he might be a guy. I think Austin Aries can can make him look good. And then, you know, we got to see what's going to happen with Eli. If they wanted to go a hill versus hill, I think that'd be perfect. You know, Eli has some unfinished business with him, obviously. Um, but now here, th that's the interesting part. They got to have some kind of guys for Austin Aries to work with, whether you elevate some people or, you know, some people that are returning. I, I just don't want to see them go the route where, they sign some people and then automatically thrust them in there. Utilize what you have. That way we, we need to get back to a point where we're having these strong divisions where we have multiple contenders, not just one or two people, you know, f chasing it and uh, holding the belt. So it's just going to be interesting. What, what I think will be a, a real telltale sign is that if Eli Drake starts to challenge Aries straight away in these new tapings, then that's Eli gone because it, they would only put him back in that position if it just to make Aries have a win over someone and uh, you know as someone who departs the company you usually lose your feud so that would make sense that if they put Eli in the title picture with Aries then it looks like Eli is going to be going but we'll see uh, that it's a problem that they've they should have really tried to fix earlier but you're right it's the lack of faces on the program and um, yeah that there isn't anyone other than Johnny Impact to come back that I can think of it could be a face so we'll see we'll see so that wraps up the show do we know what's on next week so uh, have we finished the tapings now is it over to the the new tapings is that what's happening nah I think we still got two more episodes left which is <laughs> crazy but we're gonna get LAX versus Lee the Cult of Lee and then we're getting the Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan in the woods match and I'm sure they're gonna announce some more things during the week but that's all that was announced is that on next week's show that this this big payoff uh, the the murder match that's what we should call it the murder match that's on next week's show wow okay well, there you go i wasn't paying attention uh you're quite right that should be if this is the end of the feud that should be on the pay-per-view but there you go all right well listeners let's remind you of the trivia question for this week uh over to you ro yes okay the question is who am i and the three clues are i'm a former x division and tag team champion i was a part of lax and while being a part of other companies i in one company i was the inaugural world champion and the other i won the contest that they had so who am i okay there you go and as we said if this is the first time you stop by make sure you hit the subscribe button we're slowly creeping up we need to get new listeners we want to make this channel as big as it can because you know uh, I truly believe BQ wrote we all truly believe that you know we're the number one place for impact news and positivity around impact you know we always try and call it straight but we call it fair as well uh, no hidden agendas so do make sure you hit subscribe if you're part of a Facebook page of wrestling share it on there we'll do whatever you do to get our name out there and give us a like give us a dislike 
we don't care. Um, but for the time being, thanks for tuning in and we will catch you next week. Take care, everybody. <laughs>